this is Mara and welcome back to the Raven Legacy of a Master Thief. So we are going to continue where we left off in the previous episode. We played a game <laughs> with Matt and um, we lost. <laughs> that wasn't a surprise, but we need to try again. Of course, he has something that's going to be very helpful, very useful for us. So we are playing for a slingshot. Oh, dang it. Okay, let's try this again. Oh no! <laughs> it's really hard to um to figure out how far you need to pull this. Okay, let's try this. No. No. <laughs> this, is, this is not good. Oh my gosh. I'm so bad with this. I'm sure that we need to do this so many times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, it might be that I need to do this off camera. This is going to take take few tries. Yeah, he is definitely winning. That's it. Oh, oh what? Man. The athlete wins. The How did I win? One more time. <laughs> no, that's enough for me. <laughs> All right. How is it possible, even? Here. Are you sure? I need to check that footage. I mean, I should be complaining, but thank you. I'll give it back to you when I don't need it anymore. Okay. <laughs> okay, but make sure my mom doesn't catch you with it. She thinks it's dangerous. So he definitely helped us win. Very interesting. So let's go ahead and chat with um, Mrs. Miller and the professor, and then we need to finally. Try to Ms. get Miller to Miss Miller and the professor are talking intensely. Get to she this seems doorway. Pretty relaxed by her standards. Good morning, Miss Miller. Professor Lucien. Constable Zellner, how are you? I, I heard you passed out last night. Well, not quite. I was poisoned. Oh. That wretch. Who do you mean by that wretch? That stowaway. That new raven. The young man can't be the murderer. Constable Oliver had already apprehended him when the shot was fired. You mean... Whoever killed the Baroness is still on the loose. I think I should take my leave. I I'd like to rest for a while. He is freaking out. One last question, Professor. Hmm. The safe in Legrand's cabin can only be opened with three keys. Am I right? That's correct. We sent the first to Monsieur Mokhtar of the Egyptian Museum via air freight. I have one, and the inspector has the other. But it was originally planned that someone else should carry the third key, right? You are well informed, Constable. Baroness von Trebitz should have had it. But then there were concerns, and for that reason, Inspector Legrand took it himself. Was that his idea? Well, yes, you could say that. I want to go back to my cabin. I'll see you later, Mary. Oh, uh, of course. See you later. I... I didn't want to interrupt your conversation with Professor Lucien so abruptly. I, uh, I don't know what's wrong with him. Learning that there's still a burglar on board seemed to frighten him. He was so relaxed the whole time, and then... Hmm. And then the stupid Swiss constable came by and made him anxious. Oh, I didn't mean that. No matter. I'm sure he'll calm down and come back soon enough. May I ask you a few questions? Of course. How is Matt? He seems happy enough. 
After all the commotion, he's already back to his old self again. But I haven't told him about the murder. That would be a bit too much for him. I think he's made of sterner stuff. I want to thank you again for what you did on the train. I wouldn't have known... Everything's fine. Think nothing of it. How was last night for you? It was awful. I was having a conversation with Edgar, uh, Professor Lucien, here on the forecastle. Then I wanted to look for the lady and went forward via the side deck. When I passed the Baroness's cabin, I heard a muffled scream. You heard oh? a scream? Yes. I thought the Baroness probably had a fall. I went to the door and listened for a moment. Since I couldn't hear anything, I knocked on the door and asked whether she was all right. There was no answer. Interesting. And then? I, I didn't know what to do, so I tried to open the door. It was locked. I saw the Baroness's butler, Mr. Inch, on the forecastle. I thought he might have the key and went back. On the way, the bobby crossed my path and then Edgar, who wanted to check the safe. I explained the situation to him and then the alarm went off. Interesting. How did the scream sound? It was a short outcry, very frightened, as if someone had been startled. Was it a woman's voice? Yes, the voice was high. So it could have been a scream from the Baroness, possibly because she discovered someone in her cabin. Possibly. That person might have threatened her with a weapon so that she wouldn't scream for help. Oh, God. He waited until the coast was clear. Oh, please, stop it, Mr. Zeller. The Baroness's butler said that he was on the forecastle as well? Yes, he was standing on the other side of the deck smoking a cigarette. Was he on the forecastle the whole time? Uh, I'm not sure. He was there, and later he was on the side deck with us. Oh, yeah, yes, he, he looked after you while you were unconscious. He unbuttoned your collar and held your head while the doctor checked you. But you can't say for certain whether he came from the forecastle with you and Professor Lucien, or afterwards. Well, no. But where else could he have come from? Did you report that to Inspector Legrand? Yes, last night. He was very interested and took a lot of notes. But I wanted to look for Lady Westmacott, and he let me go without further delay. He said that he'd take down my full statement today. I understand. Do you think the man from the train also killed the Baroness, Constable Zellner? I don't know yet. It's horrible. Explosions, thieves, murderers. This isn't the right place for a lady and a little boy. You and Professor Lucien seem to be having a lively conversation. Oh, yes. He's an expert in ancient Egyptian art and preeminent in hieroglyphic research. He's the head of the Egyptian department in the British Museum, you know. And he's going to open an exhibition at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Right. Uh, for the eye. They had planned on exhibiting both jewels together for the first time in decades, but that's not going to happen now, sadly. I think it's quite upsetting for him. We're working hard to ensure that at least one eye will be on display. I know. I'll ask Lady Westmacott if she'd like to participate in the opening of the exhibition. I think it would be good for her. And Professor Lucien will surely offer you a private tour. You're American, aren't you? That's correct. And you moved to England because of the job? I lived in England before. During the Second World War, I volunteered. I worked in a pharmacy on a U.S. base north of London. In a pharmacy? Interesting. Well, it was the war and everyone was sent where they could help best. Please, go on, Mrs. Miller. After the war, I studied music in London. I met my husband there. We married and went back to the States together. He was also American? No, English. But he said he had problems with his family and he wanted to be as far from them as possible. And you gave up your studies for him? Well, yes, I did. Life as a single mother couldn't have been easy. It was pretty tough then. I worked from morning till night and it was still only enough for the bare necessities. And I couldn't give Matt all the attention he needed. And then Lady Westmacott entered your life. It was like an angel appeared to me. She must have offered me the position out of pity. I had no experience as a carer. She made me a generous offer. I couldn't believe it. And she really adores Matt. She's offered him a good education, and now he has every opportunity in life. 
An almost unbelievable story. I'm still afraid that it's a dream and that I'll wake up one day. How does it feel to work for such a world-famous person? The work is very interesting and varied, and it pays well, too. You are very lucky that the lady offered the position to you. I just hope she won't change her mind one day. What would become of Matt's education then? I really make an effort to measure up to Lady Westmacott's expectations, but sometimes I feel like I fall short. Lady Westmacott couldn't ask for a better companion. I'm saving up as much money as I can all the same. I'd do anything so that Matt doesn't have to give up his new life. All right, let's ask about the If you worked in a pharmacy, you would certainly know something about medicines and poisons. Everything is a potential poison constable. It depends on the dose. Have you ever heard of chloral hydrate? It's a tranquilizer, isn't it? I'm asking you. Lady Westmacott also asked questions like that for her last novel. But since I've never wanted to kill anyone, I never bothered with things like strychnine and arsenic and all that. I could recommend something for a headache, a sore throat or a rash. That's kind of you, but there's really no need. Lady Westmacott dropped a hint on the train that she killed her hero, Partout. What did she mean by that? Oh, she must have meant the manuscript. Manuscript? She always takes it with her. It's an unpublished Partu novel. I once asked her why she never published it. She said that according to her will, the novel's only to be published after her death. And in it, part two will be killed? Maybe. I've never read it. No one has. You'd better ask her yourself. I'll be seeing you, Miss Miller. Constable. All right, so we did get a lot of information from her. That's awesome. It looks like uh, she and the professor, professor are kind of sweet on each other perhaps but we have something that we might actually um, that might actually help us to get to the stowaway so we have the slingshot we have some rocks so let's actually just combine the these perfect ammunition for the slingshot now I just need a suitable target here we go the water bottle All right. <laughs> ow! 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 Ah. Hey, Zelda, what in blazes was that? <laughs> what? what? I didn't do anything. Somebody hit me. You mean someone shot at you? Yes. Well, no. I, mean, I don't know. Didn't you notice anything? I was riveted by the fantastic view. Sure you were. We Swiss aren't <laughs> used to seeing the horizon like this. And my bottle's broken too. Oh, I don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Shards. Yeah, so we definitely need to distract more than him. Glass in a puddle. If Constable Oliver gets thirsty now, he'll be in a bind. I should help out. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, what do you want? Inspector Legrand is questioning the first of the passengers in the saloon. And? It will be hours before he gets to the stowaway. And? We'll save time if I question him. Would also save time if you stopped asking me the same things over and over again. I will not let you in. What time is it, by the way? Got an appointment? No, but I'm hungry. Go and get yourself something. I'll mind the door in the meantime. Aha. Uh -huh. You could bring me something. Though. <laughs> Making faces at me. Go and get your food yourself. I have better things to do. Oh, yeah. Like unmasking a murderer. I'm sure you're up to it. Judging by your age and rank, you must have sold loads of spectacular cases in the past. No. I was sidelined and spent my days sitting on my behind. Does that sound <laughs> familiar to you? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> What's the matter now? Did you bring me something to eat? 
So, what do you want to eat? Oh, anything. An apple or something like that. Leave it with me. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so he needs some food first. Going through all this trouble just because of that one guy. How annoying. Okay, there's the butler again. Let's go and get, get some food. Oh! Mr. Kreitzer, come on, you have to give me a bit more. You're the only one who was on the train and who has no alibi for last night. As I said, I was in my cabin. Are you sure that it was your cabin and not the Baroness's? Legrand will question the guests one after another. But if he doesn't get the answers that he wants to hear, it could become unpleasant for them. Yeah, definitely. Can we talk to her now? Lady Westmacott, may I bother you for a moment? By all means, Mr. Zellner. Did Miss Miller cope with all the excitement? I think so, but what happened on the train was quite a shock for her. She wouldn't be able to go on if something happened to Matthew. She's worried about him. He's all she has. It breaks her heart that he lives at a boarding school and can't always be with her. But she sets her wishes and needs aside so that he can get a good education. That's her way. Where is Matthew's father? Gone. Run off. Ran away from his problems again. He drank a lot. More and more after each setback. It's better for both of them this way. He left her. She couldn't have borne it. She loved him and wanted to stick by him. She fell out with her family over him. They couldn't understand her. And when he left her, the ground opened up beneath her feet. For two weeks, she was as good as dead. If she didn't have Matthew, she'd be dead. You seem to know a lot about it. I mean, about the time before Miss Miller began working for you. I have my reasons. And Matthew, do you care as deeply about the children of your other employees? If you fail with your own child, you hope to do better with others, Constable. And the idea to send Matt to a boarding school... Was mine. Matthew idolized his father and blamed his mother for the fact that he wasn't around anymore. I was afraid the situation would escalate if he had to live on a country estate alone with his mother and some old people. I think I was right. He quickly made friends at boarding school. He's popular, well-liked, a real athlete according to his teachers, and his relationship with his mother has improved as well. He's headed in the right direction. Miss Miller told me that you have a valuable manuscript with you. That is correct. An unpublished part two novel. The manuscript must be worth a fortune. Oh, it's not just any part two novel. I wrote it 20 years ago, but it will only be published after my death. It's part two's last case. Maurice part dies. You, you're going to kill him off? I already have. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. Madam, she is sassy. I was so sick of writing one part two novel after another. I was keen to uh, stick a knife in his guts. And so, 20 years ago, I did. Of course, I didn't want to disappoint my fans. So I let him solve case after case. But at least I was certain that he'd never escape me. That in the end, I would get him. <laughs> I understand. Let's just hope that this novel remains unpublished for many more years. How is the questioning going? Are you implying that I'm an eavesdropper? <laughs> the inspector is placing a lot of pressure on our dear Mr. Kreutzer. He's the only one who was on the train and who doesn't have an alibi for last night. Perhaps. But him? A murderer? I know people like him. He doesn't have enough backbone to kill someone in cold blood and remain so calm. He'd turn it into a drama and then a farce, drink himself insensible and then, railing at fate, pitch himself into the sea. 
Forget him. Legrand is wasting his time. Mr. Kreutzer just happens to be a perfect fit for the inspector's image of the raven. Athletic, cultured, moves among the rich and famous. I'll eat his violin if he's the raven or the murderer. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zellner. Of course. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring some food to the poor old... <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Oliver. Whatever Constable Oliver wants, he's getting ham and eggs. <laughs> and just oh, that a smile. pinch of salt for our friendly constable. Just a little bit of salt. <laughs> Good. Constable All right, Oliver. here we go. Huh? Ham and eggs, piping hot. Oh, I thought I shouldn't really. I don't see anyone here who'd rebuke you. It was a hard night. Yeah, true. Oh, mm, delicious. Huh. Eat it all. Just enough salt. <laughs> mm. Oh, that was good of you. Cheers. You don't expect me to wash your dirty dishes as well, do you? Oh, of course not, Your Majesty. Oopsie. Could you, uh, could you bring me something to drink? Those salmon eggs were pretty salty. I'm sorry. I have to proceed with my investigations. Goodbye. <laughs> Let's see how long he can resist his thirst. Not long at all. Ha ha! Nervous? I would be too in your position. All right, let's ask some questions. Who are you? My name is Adil, and you are... Constable Zellner, why did you sneak onto the ship, Adil? I wanted to go back home. You're Egyptian? There's no work for me in Italy. I want to see my family again. And since you don't have money, you stole away. So what if I did? So, it was you who knocked me out. Me? <laughs> Never! No? Where were you when I was attacked? Well, I couldn't take anything with me on this trip, so I uh, snuck into the kitchen and took some canned goods. Interesting. And how do you know when I was attacked? Well, I, I thought it was yesterday, shortly before we set sail. I take this bump personally. What were you searching for on deck last night? I was hiding the whole evening. I wanted to go out and get some fresh air, see the stars. But then suddenly, they were looking for me. Were you in one of the cabins? No! Did you see anyone on the deck or on the roof? No. And after we arrested you? The English policeman put me in this cell. Then he left. I've been here ever since. And you didn't notice anything along the way? No, nothing. Hmm, I'm not buying this. What about the gunshot? Didn't you hear it? Uh, yes, the English policeman had already arrested me. We heard a bang and looked around. And then? Then, the Bobby was in a hurry to get rid of me. He almost pushed me down the stairs and locked me in here. He left and, and then a short time later the alarm went off. Constable Oliver wasn't with you anymore when the alarm went off? No. I was scared that the ship would sink with me sitting here like a rat in a trap. It's hard for me to believe a single word of your story. Because I'm a foreigner? Because you seem to have learned our language in the space of a day. <laughs> Accent free. Exactly. Believe what you want. Who paid you to distract us? What? You went for a walk around the deck and let yourself be seen. Everyone goes off hunting you, and in the meantime, your partner shoots the Baroness in peace. No, 
I didn't do anything. I didn't want to distract anyone. I, I just want to go home. You're a liar. And a bad one at that. But sir, I'm telling the truth. And I'm the Raven. Inspector Legrand will deal with you. He's lying like a cheap rug. But he probably doesn't know anything about the murder. Very disappointing. So I have to keep searching. What interests me most is the shot that was fired here in the cargo hold last night. Hmm. That is a very, very good point. The cargo hold also seems to serve as a changing room for the crew. At least for the ones who don't wear white uniforms. A stroke of luck. The lock is open. Okay. Hmm. Oil stain overalls. And here, an old toolbox. It's been through a lot. Hardly any paint, dented, and the lid is held shut by a wire. Wire? I'll take it with me. Aha! We're going to need that. Hmm. Some wrenches, a bit of wire wool, an oily cloth, and here, a screwdriver. All right, so we have some wire, we have the screwdriver. Let's see, anything else interesting here? I've got the screwdriver. That's all I need. Okay. Whoever fired the shot hit the crate. Did the shooter just want to intimidate me? Or maybe he needed the bullet? can't see anything. If the bullet is still stuck in the wood, it's too deep to reach with my fingers. Okay, maybe can maybe we can use this. Yes. Well, I think the bullet is still in the wood. <whistles> I'm not a weapon specialist, but at first sight I'd say that this bullet looks exactly the same as the one Dr. Gebhardt gave me for Legrand. Uh -huh. That would mean that the murderer also fired a shot here in the cargo hold before the murder. But why? Did they just want to make sure the old gun still worked? Or was it something else? And did the bullet really come from the same gun? I can only check that in Legrand's cabin. Okay, so that's where we need to go next. But we are actually going to end this episode here. It has been a eventful episode. We got to know uh, quite a bit more about Miss Miller and Maddie's past. So there's that. Uh, we finally got to question the stowaway here whose accent has disappeared <laughs> magically. And we have another bullet now that we need to um, take to Legrand's cabin and check that out. So there's a lot going on here and I'm really excited to continue in the next episode. So thanks so much guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and comment below and I will see you next time in the Raven.